our tutorial Deep Neural Network Regression. Supervised deep learning consists of using multi-layer algorithms for finding which class output target data belongs to or predicting its value by mapping its optimal relationship with input predictors data. Main supervised deep learning tasks are classification and regression. This topic is part of deep learning regression with our course. Feel free to take a look at course curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Deep Neural Network for Supervised Deep Learning consists of predicting output target feature by dynamically processing output target and input predictors data through multi-hidden layer network of optimally weighted connection of nodes. Nodes are organized in input, multi-hidden and output layers. Weight decay L2 or sparsity L1, visible and hidden layer dropout fraction regularizations are used for lowering variance errors first generated by a greater model complexity. For full reference, I recommend that you read Joshua Benjo, Learning Deep Architectures for AI, Publishing Foundations and Trends in Machine Learning in 2009. Activation function, which describes linear or nonlinear connection between nodes. For supervised deep learning, linear, rectified linear unit, hyperbolic tangent sigmoid, or logistic sigmoid functions are used. As a formula, here we have the example of the hyperbolic tangent sigmoid, in which the activation function for the hidden layer is equal to the hyperbolic tangent sigmoid of that hidden layer. Backward propagation of errors using quasi-Newton, limited memory, Broyden, Fletcher, Goldberg channel, stochastic gradient descent, or adaptive moment estimation or atom algorithms consist of finding optimal node connection weights by minimizing information loss measured through sum of square errors. As a formula, we have the minimization of sum of square errors equals to the sum from the first to the last of the differences between output target feature data minus output target node prediction and that result to the power of 2. Output target node prediction in turn is equal to the activation function and within it we have the double sum in which in the first sum we have from the first to the L number of layers and in the second sum we have from the first to the M number of hidden nodes of the I layer J hidden node intercept connection or bias plus the I layer J hidden node connection optimal weight multiplied by input predictor features data. Great, so let's go into our studio so that we can study deep neural network regression with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within our studio. In this tutorial, we'll be working within our tutorial DNN for deep neural network regression code file. So the first step within the tutorial is to load its packages. This is done with the library function and within it we have the package name. So for this tutorial, we'll be using QuanMod and NeuralNet. So we select those two code lines, then we click run or control and the keyboard, which is equivalent. The following step is to do our data reading for our deep neural network regression. So this is done by creating this data object, which is equal to read.csv, and within it we have the name of the data file, DNN regression data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values and stored within the working directory, comma header equals to true. So we select that code line there, click run or control enter on the keyboard, and we see that this created a data object as a data frame within the global environment. If we click on this spreadsheet kind of icon, it opens the data for us. We see two columns of data, first of these dates with the daily frequency from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore nine years of data. And then we have SPY adjusted. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index and adjust it because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. So next we're going to convert that data into an XTS, which stands for Extensible Time Series. So we create this object named SPY with XTS, and from the data object we select the second column with those adjusted close prices, comma order by equals as date with capital D, data the first column. So we select that code line, and then we click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. And we see that this creates SPY object within the global environment as an XTS. And again, clicking on the spreadsheet kind of icon, 
we see the same data, but now the dates became its index. Back into the code file, the following step is we're going to create target and predictor features. For target feature, we are going to calculate the daily arithmetic returns of those adjusted close prices. And for predictor feature, we're just going to create one of those, which is going to be previous day's returns. Notice that this target and predictor features creation was only included as an educational example, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. So we create this object here named RSPY, which is equal to daily return of SPY. So here we are creating the target feature. Then we create RSPY1, which is the predictor feature, so we lack RSPY, the previously created object, k equals to 1, therefore 1 day. Therefore, with this, we are creating the predictor feature as previous day's returns. And we're bringing both of this together into one data frame named RSPY all, and it's equal to C bind or column bind, and we're including RSPY, which is the target feature and current day arithmetic returns. And then we have RSPY1, which is the predictor feature previous day's returns. We rename the column names for this RSPY all with those corresponding variable names. And last, when we did the lagging of our data, the first observation would be a non-available. So in order to have a no non-availables within our data, we, de we do not na.exclude to RSPY all, therefore removing the first row of data. So we select this code lines here, click run or control enter on the keyboard. So now that we have the data ready, the following step is we're going to delimit training and testing ranges. Training range, commonly used for algorithm training, and testing range, commonly used for algorithm testing. Notice that this training and testing range is delimiting also is only included as an educational example, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. So here we create this object named RSPYT, T for training range, and with window function from RSPY all, we're going to select from the beginning of 2007 all the way, and as we can see, ending at the beginning of 2014, therefore the first seven years of data as a training range. And then we create RSPYF, F for testing range, and again with window function for RSPY all, we are going to select as start from the beginning of 2014 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore the last two years of data as our testing range. So we select these two code lines here and then click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. In this tutorial, we'll only be working within the training range. So now that we delimited training and testing ranges, we can proceed with deep neural network regression fitting. So we create this object named DNNT, Deep Neural Network T because we're working within the train range and we'll be using a neural net function. And within it we have the following. First of all, our SPY or current day returns as our target feature being explained by our SPY1 which is previous day's returns as our predictor feature. Data as mentioned previously are SPYT so we'll be working within the training range and here we'll be creating a neural network which will have two hidden layers and one node in each of them. So we have hidden equals to C and within parentheses, 1, 1. The activation function equals to the hyperbolic tangent sigmoid with TANH. And then here we have linear output equals to true, meaning that the activation function is not applied to the output layer. Notice that these parameters here within the neural net function also were only included as an educational example, therefore they are not fixed and they can be modified according to your needs. So once we do that calculation, we're going to print the results here first with DNNT and with the dollar sign we're going to get the results metric and we're also going to visualize the results within a chart with plot function of that corresponding deep neural network regression fitting. So we select these three code lines, click run or control enter in the keyboard which is equivalent. So here we have the result for that result matrix and then also here we have the corresponding chart. So what we're going to do next is we're going to zoom into it. And notice within the chart that we see the corresponding four layers of this neural network. First we have input, then two hidden, hidden one, hidden two, and then the output layer. So what we can see here is by comparing this corresponding chart with the results of the matrix, we can see here the corresponding optimal node connection weights, intercept, two hidden, and this value here, which we find right here. Then we have our SPY1 to hidden, so it's input to hidden, and this value here, which we find right here. Then we have intercept to the second hidden layer, so we have this value, which we can find right here. Then we have hidden 1 to hidden 2, and the value here that we can see here. Then we have intercept to output, and this value here, which we can see here. And last, we have the second hidden 
to our SPY or the output and the value here which we can see here. An important observation here is that you might obtain results which are different to the ones being printed here regarding optimal node connection width depending on the algorithm training random number generation seed. Excellent. So now that we've finished studying deep neural network regression, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.